live from San Jose, it's theCUBE. Presenting Big Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Big Data SV in San Jose. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante. And this is day two of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We've been here most of the week. Had a great event last night. About 50 or 60 of our CUBE community members uh, were here. We had a breakfast this morning where the Wikibon research team laid out its uh, big data forecast, the eighth big data forecast and report that we put out, so check out that online. Jacques Nideau is here. He is the CTO and co-founder of Dremio. Jacques, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me here. So we were talking a little bit about what you guys do, a uh, three-year-old company. Uh, well, let me start, why did you co-found Dremio? So it was a very simple thing I saw. Um, so uh, over the last uh, 10 years or so, we saw a regression in the ability for people to get at data. Um, so you see all these really cool technologies that came up to store data, data lakes, NoSQL systems, all these different things that make developers very agile with data. Um, but what we were also seeing was a regression in the ability for analysts and data consumers to get at that data because the systems weren't designed for analysts, they were designed for uh, data producers and developers. Um, and we said, you know what, there needs to be a way to solve this. We need to be able to empower people to be self-sufficient again um, at the data consumption layer. Okay, so you solved that problem how? You called it the self-service sort of data platform. Right? Yeah, yeah, so self-service data platform. Is in, and the idea is pretty simple. It's, it's that no matter where the data is physically, people should be able to interact with the logical view of it. And so uh, we talk a little bit like it's Google Docs for your data. So people can go into the system, they can see the different data sets that are available to them, um, collaborate around those, create uh, changes to those that they can then share with other people in the organization, um, always dealing with the logical layer. Um, and then behind the scenes, we have physical capabilities to interact with all the different systems we interact with, um, but that's something that a business user shouldn't have to think as much about. And so, if you think about how people interact with data today, it's very much about copies. So every time you want to do something, typically you're going to make a copy. I want to, I want to reshape the data, I make a copy. I want to make it go faster, I make a copy. Um, and those copies are very, very difficult for people to manage, and they kind of mix the business meaning of data with the physical, I'm making copies to make them faster, or whatever. Um, and so our perspective is, is that if you can separate away the physical concerns from the logical, then the business users have a much more, uh, uh, much more likelihood to be able to do something self-service. So you're essentially vir virtualizing my corpus of, of data independent of location, is that, is that right? I mean, It's part of what we do, yeah, yeah, no, that's part of what we do. So the, the way we look at it is there's kind of several different components to trying to make something self-service. Yeah. It starts with, yeah, so virtualize, or abstract away the details of the physical, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then on top of that, expose a very, uh, a sort of a very user-friendly interface that allows people to sort of catalog and understand the different things, you know, search for things that they want to interact with, and then curate <laughs> things even if they're non-technical users, right? So the goal is, is that uh, if you talk to sort of even large uh, uh, internet companies in the valley, it's very hard to even hire the amount of data engineering that you need um, to satisfy all the requests of your end users of, of data. And so the question, and so the goal of Dremio is basically to figure out different tools that can provide a uh, non-technical experience for getting at the data. Um, so that's sort of the, the start of it, but then the second step is once you've got access to this thing and people can collaborate and sort of deal with the data, then you've got these huge volumes of data, right? It's big data. And so how do you make that go faster? And then we have some components that we do with sort of speed and acceleration. So maybe you talk about how people are, are leveraging this capability, this platform, what the business impact is. What have you seen there? So, so a lot of people have this problem, which is they have data all over the place and they're trying to figure out how do I expose this to my end users? And those end users might be analysts, they might be data scientists, and they might be product managers that are trying to figure out how their product is working. Um, and so what they're doing today is they're typically trying to build systems internally that, to provide these capabilities. Um, and so, for example, working with a large auto manufacturer, and they've got a big initiative where they're trying to make the data that they have, they have huge amounts of data across all sorts of different parts of the organization, and they're trying to make that available to different data consumers. Now, of course, there's a bunch of security concerns that you need to have around that, but they just want to make the data more accessible. And so, what they're doing is they're using Dremio to figure out ways to basically catalog all the data below, um, expose that to the different users, applying lots of different security rules around that, um, and then create a bunch of reflections which make the things go faster um, as people are interacting with the things. Well, what about the governance factor? Mm -hmm. I mean, you heard this in the Hadoop world years ago, oh, we're going to make, we're going to harden Hadoop, and really, there was no governance, <laughs> I mean, it became more and more important. How do you guys handle that? Do you partner with people? Is it up to the customer to figure that out? Do you provide it, that? It's, it's, it's several different things, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's a complex ecosystem, right? 
So it's a combination of things. Mm. You start with partnering with different systems to make sure that you integrate well with those things. So there are different things that control some parts of credentials inside the systems, all the way down to what's the file system permissions, right? What are the, what are the permissions inside of something like Hive or the Metastore there? Um, and then other systems on top of that, like Sentry or Ranger, are also exposing different credentialing, right? Um, and so we work hard to sort of integrate with all those things. On top of that, Dremio also provides a full security model inside of the sort of virtual space that we work. And so people can control the permissions, the ability to access or edit any object inside of Dremio um, based on user roles and LDAP and those kinds of things. Um, so it's, it's kind of multiple layers that have to be working together. And, and tell me more about the company. So, founded three years ago, you did, I think, a couple of raises. Yep. Who's backing you? Have yeah, you yeah, yeah. So, um, so we, yeah, we founded just under three years ago. Um, we had great initial investors in Redpoint um, and uh, Lightspeed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, two great initial investors. We raised about 15 million at that, on that round. Um, and then we actually just closed a B round uh, in January of this year, um, and we added Norwest uh, to the portfolio there. Awesome, so, so you're now in the, in the mode of, I mean, I always say, you know, software is such a capital efficient business, but you see software companies raising, you know, $900 million, and so, so presumably that's to compete, go to market, and you know, differentiate with your, your messaging and branding. Is that sort of what the, the phase that you're in now? You kind of developed a product, it's technically sound, it's proven in the, in the market space, and now you're, you're, you're scaling the, the go to market, is that right? Or? That's exactly right. So, so we've had a lot of early successes, a lot of Fortune 100 companies uh, using Dremio today. Uh, for example, we're working with uh, TransUnion, we're working with Intel. Um, we actually have a great relationship with OVH, which is the third largest hosting company uh, in the world. Um, so uh, a lot of great, uh, Daimler is another one. Um, so working with a lot of great companies, um, seeing uh, sort of great early success with the product with those companies, and really looking to say, hey, we're, we're out here, we've got a booth for the first time at Strata here, and sort of letting people know about sort of a, a better way or an easier way for people to deal with it, a happier yeah. way. I mean, it's a crowded space, right? There's a lot of, uh, of tools out there, a lot of companies. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in how you sort of differentiate. It, obviously, simplification is, is a part mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. the, the, the breadth of your capabilities, but maybe in your words, you could share with me how you differentiate from the competition and how you break out from the noise. Yeah, yeah, so uh, it's, 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 it's ab you're absolutely right. It's a very crowded space. Everybody's using the same words and that makes it very hard for mm. people to understand what's going on. Um, and so what we found is very simple is, is that um, typically we will actually first meeting we, do, we will deal with the customer, within the first 10 minutes we'll demo the product. Um, because so many technologies are technologies, not, they're not products, the, and so you have to figure out how to use the product, you got to figure out how you would customize it for your certain use case. Right. And what we found with our product is by making it very, very simple, people start, the light goes on in a very short amount of time. And so we also do things on our site, website so that you can see in a couple of minutes, uh, or even less than that, little animations that sort of give you a sense of what it's about. Um, but really it's just, hey, this is a product which is about it's, there's this light bulb that goes on, it's great. And you, you figure this out over the course of like working with different customers, right? Um, but there's this light bulb that goes on, where people are like so confused by all the things that are going on. And if we can just sit down with them, show them the product for a few minutes, all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, I can use this, right? So you're, you're, you're frequently talking to buyers that are not the most technical parts of the organization initially. Um, and so most of the technologies they look at are technologies that are very difficult to understand and they, they have to look to others to try to even understand how it would fit into their architecture. Um, with Dremio, we have customers that, can, that have installed it, gotten up and within an hour or two, started to see real value, um, and, and, and that sort of uh, excitement happens even in the demo with most people. So you kind of have this bifurcated market, um, sort of since the big data meme, everybody says they're data driven, and you got a bifurcated market and you got the companies that are data driven, you got companies who say they're data driven but really aren't. Mm -hmm. Who are your customers? Are they in both? Are they predominantly in the data driven side? Are they predominantly in the, the, the trying to be data driven? Well, I would say that they all would say that they're data driven. Yeah, um, who's going to say, well, uh, no, yeah, we're yeah. not data driven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, 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 would say, I, I would say <laughs> that everybody has data and they've got some ways that they're using it well and other places where they feel like they're not using it as well as they mm -hmm. should. Um, and so, uh, I mean, the reason that we exist is, is, is to make it so that it's easier for people to get value out of data. Mm -hmm. um, and so if they were getting all the value they think they could get out of data, then we probably wouldn't exist and they would be fully data driven. So I think that everybody is a journey um, and people are responding well to us in part because we're helping them down that journey. Well, the reason I ask that question is we go to a lot of shows and, and everybody likes to throw out the digital transformation buzzword and then user Uber and Airbnb mm -hmm. as an example. Mm -hmm. yeah, but if you dig deeper, you see that data is at the core of those, those companies. 
and they're now beginning to apply machine intelligence and they're mm -hmm. leveraging all this data that they've you know, built up, this data architecture that they've built up over the last five or 10 years. And then you've got the, this set of companies where all the data lives in silos and I can see you guys being able to help them. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I can see you helping the disruptors. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, how, how do you see that? Uh, I mean, in terms of your role, in terms of affecting either digital transformations or digital disruptions? Well, I'd say that in either case, I mean, so we believe a very sort of simple thing, which is, is that, uh, and so going back to what I said at the beginning, which is, is that I feel this regression in terms of data access, yeah. right? And so um, what happens is, is that if you have a tightly coupled system between two layers, then it becomes very difficult for people to sort of accommodate two different sets of needs. And so the change over the last 10 mm -hmm. years was the rise of the developer as the primary person for controlling data. Um, and that brought a huge amount of great things to it, but analysis was not one of them. And there's tools that try to make that better, but that's really the problem. And so our belief is very simple, which is, is that a new tier needs to be introduced between the consumers and the, and, and, and the, and the producers of data. Um, and, that, and so that tier may interact with different systems, it may be you know, more complex, complex or whatever for certain organizations, but the tier is necessary in all organizations because the analysts shouldn't be shaken around every time the developers change uh, how they're doing data. Great, uh, John Furrier uh, has a saying that data is the new development kit. You know, and it's, he said that, I don't know, eight years ago, and mm -hmm. it's really kind of turned out to be the case. Jacques Nudeau, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate your time. Yeah. Great to meet you, good luck. And, uh, Keep us informed, please. Yes, thanks so much for your time, I've enjoyed it. You're welcome, all right. Thanks for watching everybody. This is theCUBE, we're live from Big Data SV. We'll be right back. <laughs>